Hi, uh, let's work on our last tutorial. So we're going to put into action all the skills that we, we have gained so far. So our last tutorial will be the flow about the square cylinder. Okay, so we're going to do some scale resolving simulations. Okay, so less, less, those models. But also we're going to, to, to do some uh, steady simulations to use as uh, initial condition for the scale resolving. So the, the case basically, we have it in this figure. Okay, so we have this domain I already pre-manufactured for you the mesh so you can download it. And basically we are going to have an inlet outlet. We are going to set up some periodic faces you see here, and then your cylinder wall. Okay, and then the top and bottom will be slit walls. Okay, so the only wall, uh, no slit wall will be cylinder and the rest no slip, periodic faces, inlet and outlet. Periodic faces means that what is going on here, going out here and vice versa. So this case has plenty of data. Okay. So you have here the dimensions of the domain. So if you want to, to use your own mesh, you can get it from here. Okay. So we have here our conditions, what we're going to do. So this is a range of about 2200 uh, thousand and, uh, let's work it out. So in the in the course tutorials, this is 15. Okay. So you will have here, you have a lot of references, so if you can download of them. This is one. So you have some experimental results, numerical data, and here you will have your case file. So we have the fluent meshes, the fluent cases ready to use interpolation fi uh, files. So I already, uh, run these cases and these are the files that we're going to use to interpolate from a quartz mesh to a fine mesh um, from one case to the other. So I have everything already preset up here. We only have the, the case definition inside files. Uh, we're going to do some post-processing and I like to use these files to do the post processing. So we're going to see how to save the files automatically in, uh, while running and, and say, and then opening that using part of you. And then here we have some fluent settings and output of a case time series, just to get an idea of, uh, of the frequencies, everything. And well, the basis instructions that I show you. So we're, uh, download. Just as you're using uh, Fluent 2020, download this one. Okay, it's ready to go, and we're going to to, to work it out. Uh, also, have ready interpolation files, so we're going not we're not going to to, to run the whole stuff. The, the the whole 20 seconds usually run this one. So I already have the interpolation files so files so you can pass from one case to the others, and also get get download this this file for the to do the post processing. So let's move uh, to the first case. So in our workflow, we're going to start first with a steady simulation, okay, to, to have an idea of what is happening. Then that steady simulation, we can use it to initialize an on a steady simulation. It's still we're at the Ulrans level, which we can move really fast there. We can use large times to get a lot of information. And after running that, we pass to the to the scale resolving simulations. Okay, so let's open uh, the case. So you should have uh, by the way, just, just let me show you what we should expect here. So here we, we, we have a few cases. So we're talking about, uh, speeding your simulation, see that you can use within initialization and no initialization. So you will see that we, you can have a speed up of your solution when you start from, from initialization at the end, you will get the same, but you can speed up the, the, the onset of your perturbation. Then, uh, also we have different cases. Okay. We're working fine mesh and coarse mesh. So probably it's difficult to see, but you would realize that when you have your solutions that the coarse mesh kind of does not resolve very well, the vortex stretch and you see here, and we can also study in the fine mesh, the influence of a time step. So see that for our CFL one and CFL 10 and see what we have. Okay. So see that we got, we, we have a good solution. However, when we look at the time series, we might see that one will probably over predict or under predict the forces, but doesn't mean that you cannot run a less with a large uh, CFL number. It means that probably you are not into 
to match numerical diffusion. And then comparison between all the cases. So we go from DNS less to DES and then UDRANS. All of them are implemented in Fluent and basically any uh, decent CFL, uh, CFD solver will have all this method. So DNS is laminar, no model at all. And see what, 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 what is happening that UDRANS are very good methods. We have seen the UDRANS and RANS. However, due to the 10 average, averaging that we're doing, you see that we don't manage to capture the vortex stretching. So it's very difficult to, to capture that one. So probably you will need to let it run for very, very long times and very and finer, much finer measures, okay? And even if you have something, you will see that uh, some instabilities, they will also be damped very fast due to the time averaging. And here we have another view. So we're going to work it out, okay? Uh, don't mm, hope you have your cases. And your folder structures after you download everything, you should have something like this. Okay, so you sh you have here the meshes. Okay, so if you want to start to finish crash, you have the quartz and fine meshes. So they are within the limit for the academic license. Uh, then you have the setting files. These settings files you can use it to set up automatically your cases. Okay, then you have you will have the interpolation files. Remember, these are solutions that are already run. Okay, so you have the interpolation, you can interpolate fast. Okay, so you have interpolation, quartz mesh, the RAN solution, okay, the URAN solution, and then the less solution. Uh, then the, for the fine mesh, you will have the RANs, okay, and then the less. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to run everything at the quartz level, okay, check everything, and then we interpolate that quartz solution from the URANs or the or the RANs to the less case. But here also you have the, the field that you can interpolate it and get a star immediately. Uh, then you will have the inside files. These are the files that later we're going to open with part of you to do the on steady post processing. So, so far within Fluent, we have been, let's say, we have been doing, let's say, a static post processing, just one solution. But doing there, this post processing is a little bit tricky, so I like to use part View. And to do that one, I like to save the files in this format. You can also save the files in Fluent format, but I, 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 I have found that this format, it takes less space and is easier to manage within Paraview. And finally, here you will have a folder called cases. In the cases folder, you will have again, quartz and fine. And here we have the predefined cases, okay? Everything has been preset up. We're going to, to go through this. Okay, so download everything, have ready. So we start from quartz, runs, then we move to runs, and then we do a fast a less simulation here in the quartz, and then we, we move to define. Okay, everything just interpolating from one to the other. So download everything and let's get to work.